In this video, we're going to turn this into this using Real IV2 from the Unity Asset Store and the Medieval Environment Pack from Infinity PBR. Checking out the prefab, this is what we're going to add IV2. Now, we've set up the prefab modularly so that you can turn different parts on and off, and I'm going to create a bunch of different uh, IV prefabs that you can use independent of the rest. I've turned off the flag and the lantern and Real Ivy with tools, 3D Dynamite and Real Ivy has been loaded already. We're gonna start by clicking the plant seed and then click start growth. And this grows the Ivy and it's really neat. You can see it growing and then stop whenever you're done. Now I really like how it comes off onto the ground as well. Now this does mean it won't work in a scene where the uh, well is on a slant. For that you'd wanna create a bespoke ivy but for a flat ground this would be really nice. Now this scissor tool allows you to cut off bits of the ivy that you don't want so I'm going to cut off some of the ivy that came around to this other side that I just don't want as part of this one prefab. This is actually a great time to rename the uh, uh, ivy object itself because later when you save this as a prefab it's going to take on the name that you add so rather than having a bunch of new ivy objects you can name them appropriately for your project so now we're going to use the other side and create a new seed and then start growth and as we watch this grow at some point we'll stop and then we'll also cut the parts that we don't want to be um, seen as you can see some ended up on the top and maybe we don't want those in this object One thing I really like about Real Ivy is that the objects until you save them as a prefab can be edited. So you can always come back and modify things before your project is done. Just save as a prefab near the end of your project. Now if we turn off the frame itself, you'll notice that the two sides of the ivy where the frame was do stick out a little bit. That means this ivy won't really work that well without the frame itself. So I'm going to rename these two objects something more appropriately so I remember that these require the frame itself. And with the frame turned off, I'm going to make a couple more ivies that can be used when the frame isn't in the scene. All right, so those look good and we'll uh, name these appropriately as well. So now we're going to add some ivy on the frame itself. And so just select a part on the frame and click the start growth. Now you'll notice a little bit did come out on the edge. We can cut that off and we can also cut parts that went over the bucket if we don't want those as well. And we'll do another one on the other side of the frame itself. Putting all of them together, it looks pretty good. Now this is modular, so you can turn some on and off, but there are some blank spots here I'm seeing right here, and I wanna connect those so that they're all together, they're connected. So if I select that ivy and select this paint tool, you can kind of choose a node and bring it down, maybe bring it up and down. Oh, now in this case, it created a new ivy. If you don't select a node appropriately, then it will create a new ivy, and then, oh, it looks like I have to leave the wrong one, but luckily undo works really well. So if we undo a whole bunch, it will come back to us and we have our ivy back. So again, bring the paint tool, select a node, and there's a little white dot that you'll see. Select that and just bring it down, bring it up, and just fill in the blanks a little bit. It's a little touch and go, but you'll get the hang of it. There we go, and that's much more uh, full now. And so when they're together, I think it will look a lot, a lot nicer. 
So here I'm trying to create uh, more ivy on the roof, but I can't place the seed there, and that's because I've neglected to add colliders to the roof itself. So let me quickly add colliders to the roof. Now, Real Ivy uses the colliders to know where to put the ivy, and so I'm just gonna create a bunch of primitive cubes um, and then align the cubes as I want in the roof and then turn off the mesh renderer. That's how I create colliders for most of my objects. And now I can place a seed on that roof and start the growth. All right, now we're just gonna click the save as prefab button for each one of these and save them in the appropriate spot so that we can use them by adding them to the main well prefab. To do that, I'm going to add a new folder or actually an empty game object and call this real Ivy. And then I'm just gonna bring all of these prefabs I've created into that. I could have brought them from the project view itself and then I'm going to turn off a couple because we don't really want all of these on at once. They're not meant to all be on at once. There's supposed to be some variety so you can get a few different looks out of the wells um, without creating your own ivy. Although if you have real ivy, I do suggest you create your own. And once we do that, I'm just going to save this as a prefab by going to the overrides on the main well object and clicking the um, Apply all button. Checking out the IV on the uh, well in the scene itself. The reason why we made it modular, of course, is that we can turn off some of the IV. So maybe for this one, we can turn off the sides and uh, maybe even turn off the roof IV to give it a, a, a less IV like look. This way also, if we have another well in our scene, perhaps with different uh, geometry turned on or off, we can change the uh, ivy on this as well. Obviously there's no roof on this one, so we'll want to turn off the roof ivy um, and just design it the way we want for, uh, for this other well. And of course, we can bring the well now into the scene. It's got the real ivy attached. If you have real ivy in your project, you should see the ivy. And we'll put it where we'd like it to be. Um, and then customize it to better suit what we want for this part of the town. For this part, I want to add some ivy on this top bar here but I need to actually create some colliders first. Um, I've neglected to do that previously. And so let me do that right now. All right, with that done, now I can place a seed in the middle here and click the start growth. And it looks pretty good, actually. I like the way it's coming around everything and I even kind of like how it's dropping down right in the middle there. Now I'm going to save this as a special uh, prefab outside of the well structure. It's really just for the demo scene. Now if you want to add ivy over multiple objects, so you can see here these market stalls are actually two separate objects, you can do that in the scene itself rather than as a, a ivy on the prefab for the market stall. So I'm just going to create a uh, seed right there and click the start growth and see what happens. As you can see, it's coming over both sides of the market stalls, both market stalls, and going over the roof. So I like that, and I'm going to do a, the same thing to the other side of the stall as well. Now for this side, I'm going to redo it. Um, I didn't quite like the look, so I'll just delete that, put a new seed uh, in a different spot, and then start the growth again and see how this works. I do like this one better, but once I click the stop growth button, I did notice that it came in in ways I didn't quite want it to. So I'm gonna use that scissor tool to just delete some of the vines that are creeping in um, inside the interior that I don't really want to, to be there. The rest I think are, are pretty good though. 
Now here's a little corner of the scene that I think is pretty interesting with this cart. I'm going to plant a seed here at the corner and kind of just see what happens when I start growth. What's really neat is that while it's growing you can actually move the camera around in the scene view so you can get different angles. It stutters a little bit but it keeps growing until you click that stop growth button. And you can see it's climbing up the walls, it's climbing up the ground, um, multiple buildings, and the fence itself. So that's a really cool look. It really helps to solidify different objects into sort of one main object. So I'm going to stop growth, and I really like this look. I'm definitely going to keep this. Now I didn't see it growing up the cart itself, but I think that's okay because the cart may have just been put there for the day. Who knows? You can also put uh, vines on flat surfaces and save these as prefabs that you can just use over and over. You can bring them into any flat surface. So I'm going to create one and when I think it's about ready I'll click the stop button and I'm going to save this as a prefab and create a couple other variations as well and then we can kind of move them around on the wall to create a lot of uh, different looks without having too many objects in the scene. And they can also be reused elsewhere as well, which is nice. So here is some final looks in the scene. This is some ivy I've added to that building prefab. I'm going to add some more on the left side in the scene itself. And here's another view with some more of the ivy that we created. All in all, the real ivy too is a great asset. It makes it really easy to add some really cool looks and bring some uh, life into a scene that otherwise might be, you know, a little um, sparse of nature. So great asset.